Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 16.4 to the public. This is available to everyone everywhere around the world at the exact same time on the iPhone 8 all the way up to the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So if you have an iPhone that supports iOS 16, you'll be able to install this update. Now this particular update will vary in size anywhere from about a gigabyte to over five gigabytes if it needs to do a full install, depending on what version you're actually upgrading from. Now there's over 50 features to talk about. So let's go ahead and just jump right in and get started. But if you want to see all the different sections we're going to talk about, be sure to check out the chapters linked in the description. Now the first thing has to do with messages. So let's go into messages and you can see we have new emoji. This is to comply with the latest Unicode standard and we have everything from a shaking face Face, to a pink heart, a blue heart. We have a moose, a jellyfish. We have a hair pick. We also have hands facing up and 21 total with different skin colors and more for the different hands. And then of course you have other things such as maracas and more. So those are available to everyone. Now, the next thing has to do with cellular voice calls. Something's been added that's been here for a while for FaceTime, but if we place a phone call, if you make a phone call and you go into the control center, you'll now have a voice isolation option. While we had this for FaceTime calls for a while, we now have this for phone calls. So it should help isolate your voice from your surrounding environment if it's a little bit noisy. Now within settings under cellular data, if we go into our voice and data settings, depending on your carrier, you'll now have 5G standalone as an option. This is available on T-Mobile. Some people are seeing it in Thailand and other places around the world, depending on what your carrier is. Also iOS 16.4 brings 5G support for Turkey. So those have all been added. They may have added it to other countries, but they haven't said specifically. Now there's a lot to talk about in music as Apple has updated this a little bit. If we go into music, and then we go to an artist page and on the left, I have iOS 16.3.1. And if we go to NF here, you'll see at the top, we now have a little icon with the artist and then we can go into this. Then we get to the main screen with the different album information. So it's just a little bit different and it's been updated. Also, when you favorite an artist, there's a new animation. So if we favorite the artist, you have a new animation here. Let me show you that a little closer just want to favorite the artist. It looks a little different within an album. If you tap the three dot menu, you see rate song. If you have this enabled now has a new icon where it's a star that's sort of half filled in. They've also updated a bunch of animations within music, meaning if you add to playlist, play next or play last, the overall animation is different. So if we tap add to playlist, then we tap my mix playlist. We'll just add again so you can see it and you'll see it pops up at the bottom. This was different before where it just popped up on the whole screen. They've done the same for play next. Again, it shows up at the bottom play last. So you get the idea, but it's completely changed all of the different animations for that. Also, when you're in a library, you can now access your profile in the upper right tap on your little icon in the upper right. It goes to your account and you can view your profile here. Back in the artist page, we have a new icon for sorting instead of just the words. So if you tap on it, you can sort by title recently added or year, but it just looks a little different. Now within the album, if I play a song, we'll just tap on this one here. You can see the little waveform next to it has been updated with a little accurate waveform of the actual song. And if you want to listen to just classical music, that will be a completely separate app with Apple music classical going forward. And along with music, we also have Shazam that's built into the phone. But if we have the app and we go into maybe an album here, tap the three dots in the upper right, there's a new menu there. So that has been updated in 16.4. Now, if we go over one here to Apple books, Apple books has been updated where they've brought back the page turn animation. When we go into a book, we go to the menu in the bottom, right in that menu, go to themes and settings. And then we have this option here, tap on the option and we can now change it from slide to curl or none. They took away the page turn animation and now they've brought it back. So you can turn the page like a normal book and it looks a little bit different when we're in light mode here, it's easier to see. And you can see, we can just turn the page like we're reading an actual book. This is something a lot of people wanted back and I'm glad it's returned. Wallet gets an update as well. If we go over to our widgets and then just press here or scroll to the bottom and hit edit, scroll down under our widgets. If we go to wallet, 
scroll over, you'll see, we now have order tracking. So there's a regular size, sort of a double size, and then a quadruple size for active order tracking. So if you have a lot of orders within maybe Apple wallet, where it's tracking things you've purchased, they'll show up as far as a widget goes. So that's a nice little addition. And if we go into our settings and then go to wallet, we have a new setting there as well. So we go down to wallet and Apple pay. If we scroll down, you'll see, we have a new option for compatible cards. It says verifies that your saved cards in Safari autofill are compatible with Apple pay and allow you to use them in wallet. So you can turn that on or leave it off within the wallet app itself. If you go into your Apple card in the bottom, right, there's a new sort option. You can sort by all payments, disputed transactions, refunds and adjustments and purchases. We also have some new options if you're using a discover card. And I took a screenshot of this since the message has since disappeared, but you'll see it says virtual card number enabled. That's for discover card. It says, continue to use your card as usual when shopping online. It's now available in Safari autofill with your real card information hidden. So that's a nice update, similar to what Apple's own card does for your iPhone. Additionally, when you go to make a payment for your Apple card, the overall animation is a little bit different when you do that. So now when you make a payment, it looks like this. So you can see it's just a slight animation or change to the overall look of it. So that's been updated. There's also some accessibility updates that are very nice. So if we go into settings and then we go to accessibility under motion, we have a new option for dim flashing lights. This says video content that depicts repeated flashing or strobing lights will be automatically dimmed. Now this can interfere with things like YouTube where it seems dim all the time. However, it should use AI to figure out what's overly bright or strobing and then reduce that for you to help you out. Additionally, if you use voiceover, they've now added additional support for maps and the weather app. So if you're using voiceover to recognize what's on the display, weather should now give you information as well as maps in general. So that should be an additional thing to help you out a little bit more if you're unable to see that. There's also some new Siri voices. So if we go back and within Siri and search, if we go to our language and then we change it to Arabic, we have two new voices here. There's a couple others as well. I'll show you in a moment, but if we go to our Siri voice, here's voice one. And here's voice two. Again, if we go back and we change our voice to Hebrew, there's also some updates here as well. So we'll go back, go into our voice. Here's voice one. Hi, I'm Siri. And here's voice two. Hi, I'm Siri. Back within settings, if we go into focus under our focus modes, depending on which mode we're using, if we're using one, maybe for office, scroll down, add a filter. And if you have an iPhone 14 pro or 14 pro max with an always on display, you'll have a new option here to enable or disable the always on display based on the overall focus filter. So that's available now under display and brightness. If we scroll down and go to always on display, you'll see that they've rearranged some of the options. So this is just more of a visual change with some new wording, but they've switched it around where we have always on display at the bottom. Now, instead within photos, if we scroll down to the bottom in an album, we have the option for duplicate. If you have duplicates, they'll show up. And while that's not new with iOS 16, what is new is it now works across shared photo albums. So if you have a shared album with families using iCloud shared photo library, this will now scan that and allow you to merge those and it will change across the different devices. So you can merge those copies it merges them together and they're no longer duplicates. So you'll start seeing those as it scans the library for that. Also, if we go to a landmark, you'll see this picture here, which is one I actually took of the world trade center. If we tap on this, it actually identifies it with visual lookup. So if we tap on this, this is something again, we've had for a while where it identifies landmarks, flowers, animals, and more, and it's showing up in more places such as the Philippines, Ireland and others with this particular update. So if you're seeing that, let me know in the comments below shortcuts gets a bunch of different actions. And this time around there's 12 of them and you can see them here. I've actually added them just to show you quickly, but you'll see there's one for shut down auto answer calls, set silence, unknown callers set always on display lock screen intercom set announce notifications, set night shift, set VPN, set true tone, set stage manager. So all of those have been added as far as actions. 
And additionally, if we go into one of these, we can actually change the icon at the top now. So if we go in here, you'll see it says choose icon and we can change this around whether or not we want the standard icons we had before or one that actually matches what we're talking about, whether it's settings or not, you now have the option to change that to whatever glyph you would like, or you can use the regular settings icon, depending on what it's actually for within the podcast app, they've updated it with a few new features. One of them has to do with the library under the library tab. There's a new channels tab. Under channels, it actually has different shows from people you already follow. So maybe there's a network. If we go to the verge, you can see different ones here for top shows. If we go back Apple insider, you'll see the different podcasts here as well. So it's a nice little addition to give you maybe more suggestions as far as podcasts. And also if you're using up next, you'll now have podcast play that listeners have saved to their library, but may show up from shows you don't follow, but they would be related if you're using up next also under podcasts you follow. So if we go back to maybe library here and scroll down a little bit, it's actually showing you how many podcasts you haven't listened to yet. So you'll see there's three new here and it was it tells when it was updated here. We have four new that I haven't listened to. So it's actually giving you a count of what's actually been updated. So nice little updates, nothing huge, but these also carry across to CarPlay. So I wanted to show you that if we plug in our iPhone to our CarPlay device, give it a second to show up. There we go. Go into podcasts within podcasts under listen. Now we now have up next. So just like I mentioned before with up next, it's here as well. So you have up next with maybe some episodes of things you weren't normally listening to. Also, if we go to browse, we have curated playlists under featured new and noteworthy. We can go in and take a look. Additionally, if we go to our library, go to our shows, under shows, if we go into maybe a podcast we haven't listened to, maybe we'll go into this one here. You'll see it puts the latest episode at the top. Now, if you have an Apple watch and you go into the watch app, go to your face gallery and then scroll down to where you have color. Color has been updated with the latest spring updates for the Apple watch bands. So if you go in here, you'll see not only does it sort of archive fall 2022, we now have spring 2023. So this applies not only to color, but other watch bands as well, where we have sky, purple fog sprout green. So you'll find one that actually matches what you use on your watch itself. Safari gets some updates. And if you add a website to your homepage with this link here that I have for the Apple website, you can now enable push notifications. So maybe this website supports push notifications. It will notify you when something has been updated, you can enable or disable that. But if the website supports it, you'll now have that. Additionally, if you're using a third party browser, such as Google Chrome or maybe Bing or Firefox, they'll be able to add to home screen now as well. However, the app will need to be updated to allow it. So if we go to share in the Google Chrome app, you'll see, we don't have that option, but eventually if they want to add it, Chrome can update their app and you'll be able to add a web link here as well. Additionally in Safari, if maybe you have a text file, it now adheres to whether or not you have dark mode enabled or not. So if you're viewing a text file, you'll see now we're in light mode and then back to dark mode. So that's a nice little update. If you're reading or using text files on your Safari browser itself in settings, we get quite a few new updates. And the first one has to do with the about page. If we go to general, then about within the about page, we have a new coverage option, tap on coverage and coverage will show you all the different devices you have currently on your account. And if they have coverage with Apple care or not, you can go into that device and see the coverage when it expires and see more information as far as renewing it and more. So it's nice that you can manage it from here. You can also open the Apple support app. So that's something they've added with all the different icons for the different devices you might have. If we go into sound and haptics, we have a new option for personalized spatial audio. We had this option before, but it was found under the AirPods settings of the AirPods themselves. Now we have a dedicated section for it so you can stop using it or set it back up. Also, if we connect AirPods, They've made a slight change here. You'll see the icon there is actually different than what we have on 16.3.1. So it's a slight update. You can see it there. 
and it just looks a little bit different. In settings under general and then software update, you'll have the option to be a beta tester or a developer. This is if you've already signed up to be a developer or public beta tester, there's no longer profiles here. If we go into this, you'll see where it says beta updates. We can turn it off if we no longer want to receive betas, or we can switch from developer to public beta, depending on if we've signed up for those programs. Also, we can change our email address associated with that account. Maybe you're using your own device, but you're using someone else's developer account. You can switch that if it's your employers or your testing, tap on your email address and you'll see it says you can sign in with a different Apple ID that is enrolled in the Apple beta software program or Apple developer program. So you'll see that in many different developing environments where you may want to change that. Within settings, if you tap your name at the top, if we scroll down, we have advanced data protection. If we go into that, this feature is now available in more countries with this update, such as the Netherlands, Yemen, South Africa, Belgium, Germany, Norway. Denmark and others. Many people have been telling me they're seeing it enabled now. If you're seeing it, let me know in the comments below. If we go into the home app and then tap in the three dots in the upper right for our settings and then go to our home settings and then go down to software update, you'll see there's a home upgrade available for the new home architecture upgrade. This is something that's returned with iOS 16.4 and is available. So you can learn more about it and then go and continue and upgrade everything. You'll need to update the software first on all your different devices, and then it will allow you to upgrade the overall architecture for it. There's also manual software update support in matter accessories. So you don't have to actually tell them to update every single time you can actually choose whether or not you want them to be updated. If you have a bunch of matter accessories, so they won't automatically update on you. If we go into the tips app, Apple has updated that as well. Now tips was redesigned a little bit recently, but if we scroll to the bottom, we now have user guides. So we have user guides for iPhone, Apple watch, ultra home pod, AirPods, or whatever you actually have. You won't necessarily see it unless you actually have those devices, but you can see your devices here. And of course the different user guides, which is really nice. Now on the lock screen, say you try and log in multiple times and it doesn't work properly. So we'll go ahead and do that on a different device and lock it out. You'll see here on the left with 16.3.1 and 16.4 on the right. If the iPhone is unavailable, it says try again in one minute. We now have a support page that shows up underneath it. So you'll see it says support.apple.com slash iPhone slash passcode. If we go into the fitness app, scroll down to where we have awards, tap on show more and scroll down a bit, you'll see here with our move goals, we now have new options above 3000. So you'll see that here. It's a small change, but they've added this here. So on the left again is 16.3.1. We only have up to 3000 for move goals. Now we have up to 4000. So they've just updated that a little bit. The keyboard gets some nice updates as well. If I go into Mastodon, I typically use ivory, but I'll just use this for an example and maybe share this post. We'll copy it, then go back into messages and then paste. You'll see here, if we paste, it now has rich previews of the actual post itself. Now you can paste different links, but it actually recognizes Mastodon as well and has rich previews of it. Also Ukrainian keyboard is now supporting predictive text. Also Gujarati, Punjabi and Urdu keyboards add support for transliteration layouts. Additionally, there's new keyboard layouts that are available for Choctaw and Chickasaw. So those have been updated in the keyboard app itself. So hopefully that's helpful if you're in those areas. Now also there's an update with iPad and on iPad OS 16.4, if you have an Apple pencil with a hover supported iPad, meaning you can bring your pencil over the top of the display and it will show what the cursor looks like. There's now tilt and azimuth support. So as you can see in notes here, I have the marker selected and the line because it's my pencils tilted to the side, the line is longer. As I tilt it up, you'll notice that it actually gets narrower and then eventually turns into a dot at 90 degrees. So you'll see that here as I tilt and you're hovering over the display. Developers can add this as well. So it's a nice little update there. Now it also fixes an issue this time around. There's a few different bug fixes they've mentioned and they fixed an issue where the Apple pencil may not be responsive when you're actually drawing in the notes app. So they've fixed that with this particular update. Apple has fixed an issue in 16.4 with buy requests. If you have a family account set up and maybe you have a child, they go to purchase an app. It should pop up on your iPhone asking you to approve or deny that purchase. Sometimes that wasn't happening and they've now resolved that in this update. They've also addressed an issue where matter compatible home thermostats 
would sometimes become unresponsive if they were used in Apple home scenarios that should be fixed this time around. Also, if you have the latest iPhone 14 series and you're using emergency SOS and you have crash detection, this has been optimized again. It was being set off accidentally in many scenarios, different ski resorts and more, and they continue to optimize this. You can turn this off, but I wouldn't recommend that necessarily. I would leave it on. And then maybe if you're going to a location where you're skiing, you may want to disable it, but I typically leave it on and just cancel the request if it was to pop up on my phone and it was a false alarm. So they hopefully have optimized this and continue to fix this if it becomes a problem. Now there are some bugs remaining in iOS 16.4 that people have experienced. Sometimes there's little graphical glitches, some odd things with maybe notifications. I can show you that. So if you have a notification, sometimes it would show up improperly where it would just sort of pop in and out and it doesn't show as it should. It's not nice and smooth. Sometimes that'll just show little half icons as well. Now, as far as any other bugs remaining, well, mostly it seems to be with notifications. Bluetooth seems to be fairly stable. However, they haven't mentioned that they've fixed anything with the camera. The camera continues to not process photos as far as what you see is what you get, it seems, especially with skin tones, photos like this sometimes will be over-processed and just isn't really what most people have come to expect from iPhone. Quite a few people have mentioned this in different videos, such as MKBHD, and hopefully Apple addresses it. But so far, they haven't mentioned anything about it in this particular update. The betas do seem to resolve it a little bit, but it doesn't seem to be fixed. Other than what I've already mentioned, Apple hasn't mentioned that they've fixed anything else with this particular update. However, there are security updates with this update and the security website will be updated typically a few hours after the update is released. And then they'll tell you everything that's new with that security update. So typically there's quite a few things at every major release. So they patch a bunch of known bugs and then resolve the issues with that. And so if you're wondering if you should install iOS 16.4, absolutely. Just for the security updates, if you're wondering about that, and it seems to be fairly stable overall. As far as overall battery life, well, that's going to vary from person to person, depending on what device you're using. And some people have let me know that it's great. Others have said that it's actually an issue for them. So if we go to our battery, you'll see my battery health is at 98%. This has been my main device and I've used it consistently since it released from September or so. So this has been my main device other than testing other phones and the last 10 days, well, you can see what we had here, two hours and 45 minutes of screen active time, four hours of screen idle time with only about 25% usage. It's actually doing quite well for me today. So the prior days were not great. It just really depends on people's overall experience and what they're using, but it seems like it's gotten much better after using it for a few days. It's much more stable. As far as performance, performance seems to be quite good, whether that's an older device, a newer device, everything seems to be nice and smooth. I really wouldn't hesitate to upgrade because of that. People that are on older devices, such as iPhone 10 seem to say most things are smooth. ProMotion on the latest phones is nice and smooth with scrolling. And I haven't heard a single complaint with overall performance with this particular update. So that's a good sign. Now, additionally, when to expect the next updates? Well, typically later this week or early next week. Apple doesn't say specifically when to expect it, but Apple typically will release iOS 16.5 beta one is what we're expecting next with some minor updates. And of course, we'll see the major updates with iOS 17. iOS 17 in June will typically be shown to developers We'll see the new features. They'll release it to, to developers a few weeks later to public beta testers, and then typically a final release in September. That's usually what Apple does every single year. That was is where we'll actually see the majority of new features. We won't see much with iOS 16. There'll be more stability and minor changes at this point. And so that's everything in iOS 16.4. An awful lot to cover there. Lots of little changes that Apple's getting ready for the future, hopefully to make iOS 17 better than ever. Let me know if you found anything else I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description. Like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.